Today I fucked up by being an instant coffee enjoyer. I am an incredibly oblivious person. My own parents once switched up a rug I loved to lay on and it took me half a year to notice. So anyway, as I've gotten older I've started to drink coffee. As I've gotten broker this went from $1.50 cans to a Starbucks instant coffee. And then finally I began questioning why I was sticking with this brand which was small that I couldn't always find in the store. I saw a large container of coffee, it looked cool enough and I've gone through two batches of that over the past year. While I didn't drink coffee ritualistically, there was still an entire 365 days of not realizing anything was up. Around this time I start hearing more people talk about getting Keurigs, which I thought was strange since you can just use instant coffee and a kettle, but just thought it was one of those new trendy things. So here's the routine I stuck to. Add coffee, then add boiling water, and maybe creamer. I mainly needed it to wake up and over time the bitter flavor, hot water, and crunchiness grew on me. I just thought the Starbucks coffee was extra nice and that's why it was so smooth, and that this is what people meant when they brought up instant coffee. I'd heard of coffee filters before but those are for when you're fancily using whole beans or making Christmas snowflake decor. Eventually, just as I was starting to feel done with the game of waiting for the coffee grounds to sink and avoiding whatever side of the mug had some floaters, I came across a TikTok hack. It mentioned mixing creamer or cold water into the instant coffee so that it dissolves smoother. Dissolves. But I thought, it was only then that I realized instant coffee was supposed to dissolve and that coffee should never come with extra crunch. What I had been drinking for the past year was coffee grounds, raw and unfiltered, warts and all. Anyway over the last few days my mornings have been way more pleasant. Too long did not read. Today I fucked up by drinking unfiltered coffee grounds that I thought was instant coffee for the past year and a half. I'd heard of coffee filters before but those are for when you're fancily using whole beans. Now I want to hear a detailed description of what op used to think goes into brewing regular coffee. That's basically Turkish or Arab style coffee. I believe the Yanks call it cowboy coffee and crunchiness. I saw it coming but this still made me laugh. I think I'd still actually prefer this than instant coffee. LMAO yuck. Well, for what it is worth, you can still brew the grounds and strain them to get a good brew. A makeshift French press if you will. Op, the fanciest coffee aficionados do tastings with their super expensive specialty coffees. Those are called cuppings and you know how they do it? They put, freshly, ground coffee in a cup and just pour hot water over it, wait for the grounds to sink and then drink. A fake this is also a normal brewing method in South America. At least I saw people drinking like this at the coffee plantations. So nothing to be ashamed of. But I would still recommend to get at least a cheap hand grinder since freshly to the correct degree ground coffee, even the cheap beans, taste so much better with much less or no bitterness at all. Coffee actually can taste fruity floral, nutty, or herbal. Cowboy coffee enjoyer. Today I fucked up by letting a girl use my bathroom. Remove if not allowed. Not today, but I saw a story recently that reminded me of this one, and my sister suggested I post it here. This happened two years ago so I'll do my best to recount everything as it happened. Some background. I was still living at home at this point. My younger brother, I'll call him Matt, 15 male at the time has been taking piano lessons since he was little and he got good enough to pick up teaching as a way to make some spending money. His students consisted of kids from our neighborhood, usually around 5-12 years old. This happened while our parents were out of town on a trip. The only ones home at the time were me, 20F, my sister, Morgan, 22F, my best friend, Sarah, 21F, and Matt. Matt was teaching some kids who lived down the road from us. It was a group of three siblings, 5M, 7M, and 9F, and the way he'd do their lessons was that he'd teach one at a time while the other two hung out and played with toys. At one point, 9F asks if she can use the bathroom. We have three, two on the upper level and one downstairs, and she chooses the one downstairs. This is after she's already had her portion of the lesson, and Matt is finishing up with the last kid. About 15 minutes later, their mom shows up to pick them up, and they leave. I notice that 9F is moving a little quicker than usual, but obviously, I don't think anything of it. Some time passes, and I go downstairs to go to the bathroom. 
This bathroom is the type with a separate little room where the toilet is so that people can still brush their teeth and stuff if someone is using the bathroom, and when I walk in, the door is closed. That's kind of weird, but not alarming. I open the door and lift up the lid, and immediately, I'm hit with the most ungodly stench I've ever encountered. I have a strong stomach, but I was close to gagging. This toilet is mega clogged. The water is close to the top of the bowl, and this is not a few turds lurking by the drain with mostly clear water. I cannot see where water ends and poop begins. I knew immediately that this was not the work of a family member. No one I knew was capable of this. This was an unfamiliar and malignant turd that this girl had dropped in my home. I'm trying to work past my revulsion to deal with this in a quick and sanitary manner. The plunger, right next to the toilet, I might add, hadn't been used, so I had hoped that it would be as simple as a few quick rounds of plunging to get everything down. I gave it a try, hoping the murky water wouldn't impede my progress, and to my utter horror, the water rose higher. Not only that, it wasn't draining whatsoever, even when I left it for a several minutes in hopes that the level would go down enough for me to give it another try. The situation was dire. The smell was so thick that if I lit a match I would have emerged with singed eyebrows. The water was just on the precipice of overflowing, and if this particular water escaped the toilet, we would have had no choice but to permanently seal off the bathroom as a biohazard. There was no room for error here. I had to call in reinforcements. I steeled myself and went upstairs to find Morgan and Sarah. If not for help, at least for moral support. As calmly as I could, I let them know about our predicament and requested that they follow me to help assess the situation. As expected, they were horrified. It was a grim sight, and once again, the water level had not gone down whatsoever in the time I was gone. Somberly, we closed the door and convened in the living room, strategizing what could be done. Using all the resources available to us, Google, we weighed our options. More plunging with the water as high as it was would only spell disaster. The water displaced by the plunger alone would be enough to send it over the edge. Similarly, pouring in a bucket of water to force a manual flush was out of the question. Any science fair-esque combination of baking soda and vinegar would could only make the situation worse. After all was said and done, we were left with one option lower the water level any way we could, and then try again with the plunger. I knew that whatever I used to remove that heinous poop water would be biohazard material by the time I was done with it, so I settled on something we wouldn't miss, the dozens of empty cottage cheese containers my sweet mother, despite having access to more than enough Tupperware to store all the leftovers we could dream of, had saved over the years. The cottage cheese containers also had the benefit of coming with equally disposable lids, so they were definitely the best option we had in lieu of medical grade waste disposal equipment. I elected to use one extra unlucky container to scoop the water into another waiting receptacle, which I would lid, place on the bathroom counter covered in plastic grocery bags, and then, once I had a couple I could take it once, carry, with the utmost care, upstairs to the nearest unclogged toilet and dispose of. Having the strongest stomach out of all of us, I was drafted for the task and I suited up. A leftover N95 mask from the height of the COVID pandemic, several layers of nitrile gloves, and clothes I was willing to part with if things went south. Even if they didn't, I was going to be throwing them out anyway. The memories attached to them couldn't be washed out with all the oxyclean in the world. Gathering my wits, I went to work. It was utterly unholy. I gagged more times than I could count, and it took more trips than you could possibly imagine. Each container I removed revealed water more disgusting than the last batch as I ventured closer and closer to the apex of Claude. Morgan and Sarah gagged along with me, flushing as I poured each disgusting container into the loving embrace of the upstairs toilet. Finally, I figured that the water level was low enough to give it another try. Dread descended upon me as the water level rose once more, filling to toilet bowl with horrors anew. Like Sisyphus eternally pushing his boulder up the hill. I returned to my endless task, climbing the stairs with my little containers of evil. Seasons changed outside the window, pages blew off the calendar, and still I trudged. At first, I seethed at the girl who had subjected me to this torment, blissfully ignorant of the horrors I was experiencing at her hand. Then, I felt only pity, because clearly, whatever was going on inside of her intestines must have been more horrifying than I could imagine. Once more, the water level lowered, and I, beaten down, 
reduced to a shadow of my former self, raised the plunger again. I plunged with all my might, using muscles I have not used before or since. The clouds parted, the world regained color, as the toilet let out a pathetic gurgle, and the water finally drained. I could have dropped to my knees on that cold tile floor, I was so happy. I gave it another good plunge and watched the water finally run clear, the bowl refilling and my nightmare ending. I quadruple bagged the sullied containers and threw them in the dumpster, just as my parents pulled into the driveway. They saw the state of me and asked what had happened. Sweating, nearly trembling and ready for a year-long shower, I said the words that had been running through my head for the entire hour-long ordeal, a shit and run. Too long did not read. A nine-year-old girl blew up my bathroom so badly that I had to manually remove the water from the toilet to avoid a biohazard situation. A uh, shit and run, if you will. You needed a poop knife. Horrifying. I'd have perma banned that kid from the house after that experience. Everyone needs just a stack of five-gallon buckets in the garage. They're like four dollars each. They're a drum, they're a chair, put ice in them, they're a cooler. They're a terrarium. And when you need them to be there a bucket you can fill with impunity the bleach the shit out. Fantastic writing. The harrowing imagery, the chilled sweat on my brow, the unsettling sympathetic moaning and shifting in my gut. 10 out of 10. Bravo. I'm not having a 9 year old could cause this amount of damage. There has to have been an issue beforehand. Maybe someone else has laid a putrid log big enough to block the drains and the 9 year old's poop was just the icing on the cake, so to speak. You've just survived the kind of bathroom experience that turns ordinary people into legends. The next time you watch a disaster movie, you can sit back, relax, and think, amateurs. You didn't just unclog a toilet. You faced the abyss and scooped it out with cottage cheese containers. The girl may have done a shit and run, but you did a plunge and win.